There's one country that ticks every single box for electric vehicles. Cheap charging, long drives, uh, no winter snow, almost infinite amounts of irradiant energy uh, every day, basically. Everyone talks about Norway or California or China when it comes to electric vehicles. But from what I can see, Australia might be even better. Uh, and I was thinking about this the other day at length. And so I decided to make a video about it. So I used to think Australia was a bit behind, obviously 2016, 17, 18. The numbers were very, very small in Australia for the amount of vehicles sold that were electric. We've got huge distances in Australia, much larger than uh, British people can probably grasp. I'm obviously British. Uh, it's monstrously big and a slow charger rollout up until this point. Uh, that didn't help either. But when you look at the data, I think the story subverts. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what I mean. So here is something that most people don't realize. The average Aussie home uh, has a solar system on it that generates 13 to 20 kilowatt hours of electricity per day uh, when you spread that over the course of the year. That's the average. So depending on the size and location of the house, maybe Perth is better. Uh, interestingly, Queensland is known as the uh, sunshine state, but has technically less sun than Perth. Technically, according to the data. Bit weird. A little small fact for you. So that's enough to power an electric vehicle uh, for maybe about 60 to 100 kilometers every single day just from the solar panels on your roof, basically, without having to pay for petrol or diesel or anything like that. So that's, that's fuel on your roof, really. And you're not paying $10 for it. And I think that's still a really nice thing to have to pay sod two. For, for your fuel, basically. A lot of people think Australia is not really ready for electric vehicles because the battery's not big enough, that sort of thing. It's a very common thing that gets said every other day. I wanna show you exactly why I think Australia is actually the perfect place to own an electric car. Not just you can own one or the electric cars are not good enough. It's the perfect place. It's a big, bold claim, but I think it really is that big of a deal. So even though it's massive in Australia, and you can literally drive from, let's say, Brisbane in the southeast corner of Queensland to the top of Queensland, and you can still be driving after 30 to 31, 31 and a half hours, something like that, and that's without stopping. That's just driving time. It's massive. Or if you go from east to west, it's like 20, 25 hours or something. So it can be easily done uh, in an electric car if you do the whole thing uh, and you just charge on the way. So a BYD SEAL, for example, it will take 31 hours to drive with no stopping, but you of course need to charge. That takes the time to 36 hours. So it's actually not so bad, is it? I don't think. I mean, um, when, you, when you think about it, when you're driving for 31 hours straight, you have to pause for five or six hours. It's barely an issue because you're driving for such a long period of time anyway. Hello folks, my name is Ben Alexander. Thank you very much for tuning in. Really appreciate your time. I cover all the news from around the world, electric vehicle news. And today I wanted to explain why Australia might just be EV heaven. That's a big, a big claim, isn't it? Thank you very much to all of the people that support on uh, YouTube members or my patrons on Patreon. I really do appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, so let's jump into the data. That's where, that's where the fun is, isn't it? So in Australia, there is an absolute abundance of irradiant energy because basically every day is sunny. Uh, Australia has more rooftop solar per thousand people per capita. Um, I have used the, the term per capita and then weirdly some people still don't know what that means in 2025. <laughs> so somebody else has to correct the person and say eh, whatever. Per capita, more rooftop solar per capita than anywhere else in the world. One in three homes now has rooftop solar in Australia. So if you charge at home during the day, your fuel is free basically. Compare that to petrol, which is, I don't know, $1.60 if you get the cheap stuff, maybe $2 for the expensive stuff. Uh, in many states right now, that's a massive saving. So I did the numbers on this a long time ago, quite, I don't know, a year ago, something like that. If you drive a small economical hatchback and you drive it for 200,000 kilometers, you will basically pay $20,000 or more 
in, in petrol costs, really. So if you paid that in uh, electric, if you drove an electric vehicle that sort of distance, it would be literally just a few thousand dollars if you just bought it at the expensive day price. But of course, if you charge from solar, that sort of just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So there are actually uh, reports in Brisbane, a couple of places on the East Coast, of people paying under $100 for the entire year in fuel for their electric vehicle. Australia generates over 30% of the electricity from renewables. Much of that is solar panels, obviously, almost all of it, actually. Uh, many electric vehicle owners in Queensland and New South Wales run their cars entirely off of so solar panels during the day, basically, and then they disconnect it on the evening, that sort of thing. But batteries are becoming way more common. And I was just looking on AliExpress, just out of interest, and I know it, some people might say it's ropey because you don't know the quality of the batteries that you're buying, but basically for five and a half thousand dollars, and I suspect there's going to be a little bit of extra tax maybe when it gets to Australia. You can get a 30 kilowatt hour uh, LFP battery delivered with good reviews. 300 reviews, 4.9 star rating. I think that's pretty remarkable. So I think there's a good argument for having batteries in this day and age. And uh, yeah, in Brisbane, it, you know, as for example, it is basically sunny almost every single day, especially when it's not, not uh, in winter. So from first thing in the morning to the end of the day, often a small five or six kilowatt uh, solar system is actually generating basically full power from like the, the moment you've had your first cup of tea in the morning or your coffee for the rest of the day. So batteries degrade faster in extreme heat. I think we all kind of know that, which is really nice because in 2018, 19, 20, that was kind of, not many people knew that. Now, everybody seems to know it, brilliant. Australia's mild temperatures compared with global extremes like Norway is very cold, Dubai, really hot. Right now, for example, it's 37 degrees in Cairo. Uh, so Australia, relatively speaking, on a glo on the global stage, is, is you could say it's, it's mild, even though that's a bit of an odd thing to say. It is still kind of mild. So Australia has, you know, you've got uh, Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Adelaide, Brisbane, where it is generally warm or hot all year round, but not so hot that the cars can't cool the batteries without, you know, it doesn't really take much effort and they can keep themselves cool. There are no salted roads, less corrosion on the cars, longer electric vehicle lifespan, uh, which has already kind of been built into electric vehicles anyway, but also because they're not rusting away. I've literally seen cars in Brisbane that are 20 years old, literally 20 or 21 years old, and they look only two, three years old underneath. It's that amazing. It's really crazy. So especially as well for someone who comes from Northern Europe where cars rust, it's surreal, really, to see a car from 20 years ago look that good. Basically, there are, there's no range drop either from for, for winter driving. Like, it is technically winter in uh, Brisbane now, but it's 10 degrees in the night. So it's not that cold. And uh, it's not definitely not Norway or Canada cold, for sure. So battery heating as well in cold climates can cut range by 20%. 30%, something like that. No problem in Australia, we don't have that. In the US, EVs also lose up to 40% or 41% of the range in cold weather, uh, AAA study says. Australia, maybe naught to 5%, somewhere in that region, drop in winter, unless uh, you're in the mountains, in the snowy mountains in the Alpine region, because yes, Australia does have a fantastic Alpine region. I was thinking about going to the Alpine region uh, it's like a 13 or 14 hour drive. A beautiful drive though, and uh, to go to Mount Hotham, somewhere like that, because it's currently covered in snow, and uh, so I may be going to go down there, maybe. Australia now has over 1,300 public fast charging stations and growing quickly. Uh, you've got Ampol, Tesla, BP Pulse, EV, ChargeFox, expanding to cover all the motorways. You can basically do all the East Coast now really easily. The New South Wales EV strategy includes 3,500 new fast chargers by 2027. Highways between major cities, obviously, uh, are now covered by DC fast charging. Uh, so you can drive from Brisbane to Melbourne in an electric vehicle, fast chargers every 100 to 150 kilometers, which is brilliant. There's also a new Queensland initiative called the Electric Superhighway. Uh, phase three adds 24 more sites as well in Queensland. A few years ago, Australia was way behind on electric vehicles, basically on the infrastructure as well. Now it's catching up super, super fast in terms of how many electric vehicles are sold per year. But when you zoom out and look at the big picture, uh, you've got cheap solar, mild weather, 
ish, relatively speaking. Long, fairly flat roads most of the time. Uh, ex expanding charges. So you start to realize that actually Australia is ideal for electric cars. And I think a lot of people are realizing that quickly. They've got solar panels on the roofs. Why not just have an electric car? Why am I buying fuel? Kind of, it's, there's no point. And it's also very, very calming in a, in a city environment to drive a, an electric car. So we are at a point now that almost everyone could have an electric car and not suffer at all. So this is where it gets maybe a bit interesting, at least for me, when I was making the notes for this video. So they will have basically all the, all the cars you can get now, all the modern ones, 300, 350 minimum kilometers on a charge, way more for a better car with a bigger battery, like a Tesla or something like that, or one of the nice BYDs. Right now, I'm trying to renovate a house in Tentfield. I've uh, still got bad chest issues from bronchitis in December. And uh, yeah, anyway, it's still quite sore. It's quite awful timing, really, because I've got so much to do this year on the house. And uh, yeah, but my point is, it's fairly rural. I know they sometimes travel to other towns to buy things. And I think uh, it's interesting when you look at the data here. So it would be fine for them because Tentfield uh, has everything you want. But some people want to drive north 60 kilometers to the next town or village. I would call it a village, but everybody seems to call them towns here, uh, which has better stores in it, basically, and 120 kilometers one way to Warwick, and then you could come back. That has everything you want, like car parts, and you can buy a catch or something like that. So for people here uh, who, you know, that travel larger distances, they can do that completely fine on single charge, go all the way there, all the way back. You can get from here to Brisbane, charge up, come home again. So it's totally fine. And that's considered fairly rural, I think. So coincidentally, if anyone does drive nearby, one of the nicest roads that I've experienced in Australia, one of the nicest roads, and I have traveled extensively in Australia, is the road from Warwick to Tentfield on the east via Liston. Honestly, beautiful road. You should actually endeavor to go on it, not just go on it if you're nearby. Fantastic place to stop is Liston, by the way. So uh, yeah, 240 kilometers round trip for a pop to the local car parts store, or you can get things delivered really, really quickly. Things seem to come to Tenterfield very, very quickly, like a week uh, from China, you know? So anyway, that shows you that rural Australians will, they will think differently a little bit about how how much range they need, that sort of thing, but it is totally fine. It's more than, more. they use more range than those people who are city dwellers for sure. It's a non-issue for city dwellers, Definitely a non-issue, I think, having lived in one for years. Brisbane is fairly small as well. West to east from, say, Manly to Ipswich. It's not, it's not really. It's a, a little bit of queuing to get through the artery road, but it's really not, you don't drive very far. 80 to 90% of EV owners charge at home. Public charges, uh, there's a sort of anxiety around them, uh, which I think is far overblown now, especially in 2025, because they are everywhere, everywhere you'd want to go in Australia for sure, even here in Tenterfield, there's a row of Tesla superchargers. Nobody ever uses them whenever I go there. And I was walking past there the other day and a lady knew who I was and she said, ah, you know, and she said she was called Mandy and she was charging her Kia EV6. And she asked uh, if it was me because she watches, which is weird. And I told her I'd mention her in today's video. So if we can all say in the chat, hello, Mandy. Fast charger rollout is growing. 40% year on year, 40% more this year than last year. So there are plenty of chargers already that will get way better quickly. The infrastructure will be getting much quicker in the next five years, uh, growing much quicker in the next five years. Something I've noticed a lot in uh, rural towns is diesel utes, they're everywhere, but it would be nice to see those become electric which is one of the reasons why I think the BYD Sharp represents such a good opportunity or the GWM Canon, really, really great. And uh, yeah, diesel is the second most cancer causing thing in Australia after the sun, says the Cancer Council. So a bit crap, literally stinks sometimes midday on the high street when you go to the bakery or something, which is very good by the way, if you do pop by. So what do you think? Do you reckon Australia is the best place on earth to own an electric vehicle or is something still holding us back in Australia and if you've got an electric vehicle here in Australia how much do you actually spend on charging per year roughly I'd love to hear your thoughts and your real world numbers any geeky numbers or data please just put in the comments below any questions at all put in the comments below and I really appreciate the uh, patrons on uh, patreon as well and the YouTube members thank you very much I really couldn't put the time aside to make these videos without you
So yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you very much.